Good morning, Kingsley community. I made it. It's 1124, so it's still really morning. <laughs> and it is July 1st, 2020, the first day of July. Beautiful day. I hope you get to go out to the beach, or if you're working, I hope you're working in air conditioning. And for all those guys and gals that are working outside in this heat, stay hydrated. <laughs> so our scripture reading that I'm reading from the 40 Days with Wesley by Bishop Reuben P. Job is entitled Life in Christ. And I'm going to read about the raising of Lazarus. And this is, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, 17 through 27. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was a little less than two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother Lazarus' death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him while Mary re remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my, mo my brother would have, wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last days. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, God's Son, the one who is coming into the world. So Martha couldn't understand that Jesus was the res is the resurrection and the life, and he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead, dead in the tomb for four days. And as the King James Version says, it stinketh. So he had been dead for four days, so he was dead, dead, dead. But God is going to do an amazing thing through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and raise Lazarus from the dead. Not on the last day when Jesus comes back and all who are dead in Christ will rise again and have new bodies. He's talking about today. So um, I want to read John Wesley's first reading. It's from his sermon 113, Walking by Faith, Work 7, colon 260. So Martha needed to walk by faith. I thought she was a faithful woman, definitely, but she didn't really see Jesus as who he was, not just to save our lives for heaven, but to have an eternal life now, an eternal and abundant life right now while we're still on this earth. So John Wesley, John Wesley writes in his sermon 113, Walking by Faith, how different is the case, how vast the preeminence of them that walk by faith. God, having opened the eyes of their understanding, pours divine light into their soul, whereby they are enabled to see God that is invisible, to see God and the things of God. What their eye had not seen, nor ear heard, neither had it entered into their heart to conceive. God from time to time reveals to them, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, which is the prompting of the Spirit in each believer, which teaches them all things. Having entered into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by that new and living way, that means through faith in Christ, and entering the holiest by the blood of Jesus means you enter this holy throne of God through the blood of Jesus. This is how we can approach a holy God because we are made holy through the faith in Jesus Christ. So he says, having entered into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by that new and living way through faith, and being joined into the general assembly and church of the firstborn, Jesus Christ, the first, the firstborn, not that he was born. <laughs> anyway, we'll get into that. That's another sermon. And unto God, the judge of all, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, each of these can say, I live not, but Christ liveth in me. I now live that life which is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is my life, shall appear, then I shall likewise appear with him in glory. So Bishop Job writes, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Why then is it so hard to see this life abundant and eternal reflected in the church and in the lives of individual Christians? John Wesley seemed to believe that the answer is quite simple. We have not really feasted on the bread of life and have not given ourselves completely to God in Christ. To live in Christ is to give all that we have, all that we are, and all that we hope to become to God's gracious direction. This is to enter into fellowship with God in a new and nurturing way, a way that leads to assurance of salvation and life abundant and eternal. 
It is a way that leads to the confidence and comfort that only companionship with Jesus Christ can bring. And it is a way that leads to def definite and decisive response on the part of the believer. I had a friend who was in charge of youth ministry, and she had on the wall, don't just talk the talk, walk the talk. So in other words, don't just believe what the Bible says and quote scripture at people and use it as a billy club. Actually believe what Jesus did and act like Jesus did. Walk the walk. So believe that Jesus, when he says, I've come now to give you a life now that is abundant. That means um, a life that is full of peace, not not a life that doesn't have situations or struggles, but a life that is full of peace, knowing that Jesus is with us during those struggles. A life that is abundant, meaning everything we have, if we look at everything we have, we know that those blessings from come, come from God. If we look at what everybody else has, then all of a sudden our blessings aren't so good. So God says, focus on me and focus on the blessings that I give you. So God said, I've come today. I'm the resurrection and the life today for you who believe in me by faith. And I give you an abundant life today, now, here, not just in heaven when you die, today, right now. And so when my friend put up, don't just talk the talk, walk the walk, the only way that we can live by faith in Jesus Christ and to walk the walk that he walked on earth and to live the way he lived is to be in complete relationship with God and be completely dependent on God. That means spending time in his word. This is a great way to do it. Listening to devotionals, reading God's word on your own, attending church if you have in-person church or watching it online. Um, these are the ways that we stay in close connection with Jesus Christ, God the Father, and where we're able to hear the promptings of the Holy Spirit that will prompt us to remind us that we are assured of our place in heaven those who believe in Jesus Christ will have eternal life, which means they will never die. Our bodies will physically die, but our souls will go with Jesus. And then on when the day when Jesus comes back, he'll resurrect those that are dead in Christ. And we will have new bodies and we'll have new, new things to do. But until then, Jesus says, I'm here to give you an abundant life today. So live a life that is peaceful. Live a life that is joyful. I love this new song that says, um... I always have a reason to choose joy, so I should get up and dance because the reason I should always choose joy is because I have Jesus Christ in my heart. I have a place in the eternal, in the Father's eternal home in heaven, but I also have God's strength and power through the power of the Spirit in me that prompts me to all truth and keeps it together when bad things come my way. So if you're in a situation where bad things are coming your way right now, I want you to stop and I want you to pray to Jesus and I want you to ask him for strength. And to show, to show you, ask him to show you that you have abundant life and to remind you of all the blessings you have around you. Even if you don't have a job or even if you um, don't have a place to lay your head, maybe you have family. Maybe you have someone that's helping you. You can always find joy in Jesus Christ. I hope this devotion was helpful to you. I will see you tomorrow on Thursday. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye-bye.